Rheumatoid arthritis causes pain, swelling, stiffness, and eventually damage of the joints. So I have 15 exercises in a short routine that can help you control the symptoms. Hi everyone and welcome to Exercise for Health. I'm Richard and today I'm going to provide some advice and a short mobility routine, which starts at this time in the video, for people that are suffering with rheumatoid arthritis. If you're new to this channel, we offer tips, advice and exercises to help you manage your health condition with physical activity. So go ahead and tap the subscribe button below and the bell icon if you want to be notified of when we upload a new video. Rheumatoid arthritis is a long-term autoimmune condition that affects all the joints in the body, making it different to osteoarthritis that normally affects one joint due to biomechanical changes. In rheumatoid arthritis, the immune system becomes overactive and attacks the healthy joints, causing inflammation through an increase in fluid and swelling, which makes the joint look out of shape and unstable. The chemicals in the fluid can also cause permanent damage to the joint and the surrounding bone. Risk factors for developing this condition include being overweight, being a smoker, or having a family history of it. It generally affects women more than men, and symptoms usually start between the ages of 40 and 60. In addition, symptoms such as fatigue, tiredness, and weight loss can also be experienced. Usually the smaller joints, such as those in the hands, wrists, ankles, and feet are affected initially, and there may be periods where flare-ups make the symptoms worse. Someone diagnosed with this condition is likely to be on medication to control the symptoms, such as any of those that are shown in the main drug groups on screen now. However, physical activity and gentle exercise can improve your symptoms and help you manage the pain. It's also worth noting that being less active with the condition can lead to stiff joints and weaker muscles, so moving little and often is better than having longer sedentary periods. Everyone with rheumatoid arthritis will react differently to various types of exercise and activities. So if you're starting out, it's best to find exercises that you are able to manage without increasing the symptoms. As a rule of thumb, high impact activities that involve running or jumping or contact sports are more likely to cause problems. In addition, exercises or activities that cause a flare up should be changed for something else. Generally, breaking up periods of long sitting with some light activity around the house or at work will help reduce the stiffness associated with the condition. Exercise such as swimming, an aqua class, cycling or walking will put less strain on your joints whilst performing it, so it may feel more beneficial to you. If you have access to a hydrotherapy or warm water pool, then you can do exercises that are suggested by your physiotherapist. Yoga, Pilates, and Tai Chi are generally thought to be suitable for rheumatoid arthritis, but there are many different types, so it's worth checking it out first before attending a class. Other advice for people with rheumatoid arthritis include ensuring you get a good night's sleep to help your body recover from the effects of the condition, and joining a support group where you can talk to others that are experiencing the same as you, as this can be reassuring. If you're not experiencing a flare-up and you're younger or fitter, then there may be a number of workout videos on my channel that you can follow to help manage your symptoms. And they range from gentle seated exercise to more energetic cardio sessions. I'll leave a link to the playlist of them in the description below so you can check it out after this video. If you are in possession of a squishy stress ball that you can squeeze in the palm of your hand or pinch between the fingers, then this can help strengthen the muscles in your hands if those joints are affected. However, let me run through a short follow along seated mobility routine that you can do every day at home to help you manage your symptoms. Aim to start very conservatively the first time you go through it, and then if you can, gradually increase the amount of movement or input for each one whilst maintaining the right balance for you. Okay, to begin these mobility exercises, you need to be seated near the front half of your chair. So walk your hips forwards, sit yourself up tall so you're in good posture, and we're gonna start working through the toes and the ankles. So you're gonna point the toes forwards like you're trying to make a fist with your foot, and then push the foot forwards, moving the ankle, and then pull the toes back, and then pull the foot back. So you're getting as much movement as you can through the toes and through the ankle. And we're going to do each of these exercises in this routine about five times. 
Then moving on to the next one, we're going to then work through the knee joint. So we're going to be alternating between one side and the other side. You're trying to slide one foot back, getting the heel as close as you can to your chair to get the knee to bend as much as possible before straightening the leg out and alternating between the two. Once you finish with the knee bends, have your feet directly underneath the knees, sit yourself up tall. We're now going to work through the hip by trying to raise one foot up off the floor, lifting the knee up as high as you can. And I've got my hands underneath the leg just to provide a little bit of extra support so I can use it to passively lift the actual leg up slightly to get a little bit more movement into the hip joint. Make sure you maintain good posture while you do this so that the back doesn't start to curve over. So sit yourself up tall all the way through. Okay, the next one we're going to move into the spine. So with your hands on the shoulders, just want you to rotate the spine so you're turning the shoulders from left to right as you twist. That will just help to start to mobilize the actual joints of the spine. Make sure you stay in really good posture while you do this one so you don't actually collapse the spine itself. So try and sit up tall all the time while you twist left and right. Right, we're next gonna bend the spine laterally. So you're gonna start off with one hand out to the side, reach out as far as you can, and then come back to the center. Make sure you keep your feet relatively wide on the floor for this one, just so you don't feel like you're gonna fall off your chair. And you can see I've used my other hand just to provide a bit of support by the side of my hip. Once you've done five reaches on one side, you can then switch over and do five on the opposite side. Okay, moving on to the next one, we're going to flex and extend the spine. So you might need to take your feet just a little bit wider for this one before you start. So you can reach your hands down between your knees. If you can reach the floor, brilliant. And then from there, you're going to reach up towards the ceiling. And we're really trying to open the spine back up as you do that. So as you reach up, try and think about leaning backwards slightly before you then come back forwards again to reach towards the floor. So now we're going to start working into the shoulders. We're going to do some shoulder rolls. So I want you to lift the shoulders up towards your ears, squeeze the shoulder blades back together, and then let the shoulders drop back down. So again, get as much movement as you can that feels manageable for you. Remember, you shouldn't be working through pain, but there might be a little bit of discomfort with some of these exercises, but just work through a range that feels comfortable for you. Okay, the next one is to go on to shoulder rotation. So if you lift your arms up, so you've got the palms of your hands on the back of your head, so the elbows are about the same height as your shoulder, and then lift the hands away from the back of the head, which will externally rotate the shoulder joint, and then slowly bring them back to the back of the head again. Do this slowly. You can actually pause at the point where you've got them further out for a few seconds before you let them come back to the head. The next one works through quite a big range of movement for the shoulder. So we're going to do a circumduction of the shoulder joint, which is basically taking your arms around in a big circle. You might want to start off with your elbows bent for this one, but if you feel that you can, then you can start to straighten the elbow to provide a little bit more movement, which will obviously mobilize the shoulder that much more. Okay, now we're moving higher up into the spine, we're going into the neck, we're going to do some rotations. So make sure you're in good posture and you're just going to basically nod your head like you say no as you turn it from left to right. 
and just work with your range of movement. Don't overdo it, just go as far as you feel comfortable. Okay, now we're gonna start working down through the arms. So we're gonna to go to the elbow joint. So for this one, start out with your arms straight and then you're gonna bring the palms of the hands up towards the shoulders, getting the elbow to bend as much as possible before you straighten the arms back out again. Okay, now moving on to the wrist, start off with your elbows on your legs just for a bit of support and then you're going to try and flex the wrist and extend the wrist as much as possible. Try and make sure as you do this exercise that you just kind of keep the hands relatively relaxed as you then flex and extend at the wrist. Moving on to the knuckle bends, this time start with your hands pretty much straight. You're going to keep the fingers straight as you bend at the knuckles, pause for a split second at the bottom where you're getting the contraction of the muscles in this hand and then slowly then begin to open them back up so the hand's straight again. Okay, now moving into the fingers of the hands, you're going to make fists with the hands. So you're going to start to bend at the fingers, bring the knuckles in, bring the thumbs onto the bottom of the fingers and then reverse it as you go back out the opposite way till the hands are back out flat again. So we're just trying to work through each joint into the fingers and into the hand to get as much movement as you can just to mobilize those joints. And then the final exercise is to do the finger spread. So this is where you can start with the palms of the hands on your thighs. And we're just trying to splay the fingers out and the thumb out as wide as you possibly can. Hold it for a couple of seconds before you bring the fingers and the thumb back together. And that completes your routine for the day. I hope you can take something away from this video today. If so, then please give it a like by clicking the thumbs up button below to help this channel grow so more people can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching and remember to stay active, keep moving, and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.